Welcome back in to Talking Tech. Home team Brandon Leak here with the all-time leading passer, the College Football Hall of Famer, the Davey O'Brien Award-winning quarterback, Joe Hamilton. He's also Super Bowl champion. He's also on the third floor of the College Football Hall of Fame. Coach Sean Nerney, man of the people, coach of the children, Georgia Tech man and Georgia Tech insider. We are here to talk tech. Not going to talk much about Virginia Tech. 45 nothing. Time to move on. Really burn the tape. We can just get on. Um, I think the only thing I would say about that game is you saw enough that you need to clean up. Clean up what you can clean up on your side of the ball. Let's get on to NC State. You say burn the film, burn the tape, yes, and move forward. Still, still being positive and trying to find some good things. And there were some good things that you can build off. That was what I saw out there, Nerny. Yeah, I mean, listen, if you want to look for good things, I'll, first off, I'll say this. They were playing a lot of underclassmen. You could tell that because Virginia Tech basically did whatever they wanted to on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, offensively for Georgia Tech, I think one first down in the first half. So obviously not a lot to go through and watch the film. But positives, uh, the, you know, the second half, I think late in the uh, third quarter, you saw the true freshman Jordan Yates come in the ball game. And I, I, I got to tell you, Joe, from what I saw, I was impressed by the kid's demeanor. He, he When he got out on the football field, you know, didn't have happy feet, didn't really Really seemed to be the moment wasn't too big for him. Absolutely. Now he did the obvious rookie things, hold on to the ball a little bit when he should have been throwing some of those away. But you know his receivers didn't help him a lot either. He, they had a couple drops when he came into the ball game. But I, I got to say I was quite impressed by the uh, freshman. Yeah, and one thing I want you to just to pay attention to, uh, should have paid attention to what I saw on the sideline. I think you saw it because you're a football guy as well, Nerney. When he got into the football game the energy of the sideline. When he started to make a few plays, uh, those guys were high-fiving, chest bumping. That says to me that this guy is all in. He's got some charisma about him. About him. He can galvanize the troop. troops. They believe in him. So going forward, at some point in time, you're going to have to open up the, 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 the job, the, the quarterback position, the quarterback depth chart, because he's been a, uh, above the line for a long time. And dare I say, not necessarily in the fourth quarter, we should be able to handle NC State. Not in the fourth quarter you bring Jordan Yates in when the game is in the balance. What about in the first half? What about in the first quarter for him to feel that intensity? And dare I say, what about starting him? We get on the NC State Thursday night under lights at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Excellent opportunity uh, to bounce back. And you're playing a team that is having a difficult time running the ball, throwing the ball, and scoring touchdowns. Uh, Georgia Tech favored in this game, but that you can't worry about that stuff. The point is <laughs> you're playing a team that gives you an opportunity. If you execute well, you can get out of there uh, with the W. Where do the, the Jackets need to go to get that, in your opinion? Well, W home team, they need to just be consistent. You know, continue to put uh, manufacture some pass rush. Uh, and disguise in the secondary. The strength of your, of your football team has been the secondary in the entire year. Uh, make sure you take advantage of some of the turnovers that NC State is going to give you. Matthew McKay has not been the no. best with the ball. No, and then they, they're showing you that they lost uh, Finley uh, yeah. from last year. That's paying. That's not paying dividends for them right now. And then offensively, when that does happen, the field goals. You're going to have to, in the, in, in the chip shot field goals, take advantage of them. Uh, those continue to rush to run the ball down here with a plethora of running back, including Jordan Mason, who's having an outstanding season. And on the kickoff, on special teams, you can't let the team continuously start on uh, the minus 40, the minus 35. We're going to have to bore our necks on the special teams a little bit more to win, to beat, not just play well, because we're beyond Thursday night playing well and that being enough against NC State. Yeah, I want to see ridiculous amounts of pressure, creativity <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the defensive play call, because listen, the secret's out right now. Virginia, Virginia Tech, they both did it. Attack the Georgia Tech front seven, okay? Don't go after the secondary. Don't go down the field against them, because the secondary is a strength of Georgia Tech's team attack the front seven so Georgia Tech you got to get creative all right get guys line guys up where they haven't lined up you know get them moving pre-snap bring pressure from different hell go cover zero and let your uh, studs in the secondary man up with some of these guys get pressure on this NC State quarterback get them confused as much as you can all right uh, last two games for the Jackets at home last two games for the Jackets nationally televised outside of what's on the field What's important to get out of these last two games, in your opinion, Joe? Recruiting. Uh, the, the, the real buzzword, uh, what college football is really all about, is the Jimmys and Joes. That's what you want to get accomplished. And how do you get that accomplished? Style points. 
You bring out your best uniform, your best combination. You show some swag on the sideline. You do some little, you, maybe in the next two weeks, you send out more handwritten letters. You identify your top players on your board and not messing around, and you have them paying attention to what's going on on the flag. I steal. I go Oregon style. They, the jackets should have 50 different combinations. And I know old school jacket fans love the white and gold. You can still keep those, but I, I'm switching it up. Anything I can do to help recruiting, I'm all for it. Absolutely. Well, another thing, too, is think about the fan base. Give the fan base, and it goes back to the uniforms, to, to the swag or whatever. Give the fans something to be excited about going into next season. And you touched on it a second ago, and we've talked about it this week. I'm starting Jordan Yates this week, all right? And it's a short week, although he, you know, it's not really a short week for him considering they only played for one quarter this past Saturday. He should be rested and, and, and ready to go. I got to tell you, from what I saw from his, you know, you know, from his composure when right. he came in the ball game, I don't think it's going to be too much for this kid to go out there. Now, James Graham, all, I said it all season long, from what he's being asked to do, which is run a completely different offense for what he was brought into Georgia Tech to run. I am so proud of what that kid has done this entire year. You saw, I, you could sell on the sidelines when I was uh, re-watching the game on Saturday. When he came out of the game, very emotional, tears on his eye, in yes, his eyes on yeah. the sideline. This is a kid that loves Georgia Tech, loves to play football. With that said, I got to give the fans a little bit of a, a taste of what Jordan Yates can do after having a week to prepare for a ball game. Get him in the flow of the game early, and you know, listen. If, if he gets beat up, if the offensive line's not protecting, you know, if something breaks up, you know, breaks loose. You still have James Graham. You can bring him in, and that, my friend, will go a, a long ways again in recruiting, showing these guys that you can come in and, and come in and play. And one more point: when you're talking about the Georgia Bulldogs in two weeks, even Thursday night, you must attack the recruits. This is why we need you here. You want them to still see the philosophy, still see the, 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 the style and the technique, but you see where you picture yourself here. Not them, you. And that's how we're going to change this thing around. Wins and losses are going to come when you come on campus. So they need to be honing in on recruiting the next two weeks. All right, and that'll do it for this episode of Talking Tech. We see if uh, Georgia Tech can get the win Thursday night, then they get some time to get ready for the Georgia Bulldogs for the season finale. He's Sean Nerney. He's the greatest passer in the history of Georgia Tech in the College Football Hall of Famer. A man I think who should have his own street. We're going to work on that. <laughs> I'm home team. This is Talking Tech.